All right, now we're going to talk about uh, the impact, the, the hybrid impact 4-H collards, uh, trophy rapeseed, and then just winter canola as well. They're, they're similar looking plants, but they've got some different uses. Uh, the, the hybrid collards are one of our absolute favorite grazing plants, planted just about any time of the year. Uh, but again, as you can see from a spring planting, we've got no bolting going on. Uh, so this class of brassicas have the same reproductive trigger as what the turnips did in that they have to vernalize before they're going to produce uh, any seed. Uh, so we missed any vernalization, so we're good to go there. Uh, Dale, I think these brassicas, this, this looks about as good as I've ever seen a brassica look in the spring. These are really, really nice. Uh, and as you look at these, you may not visually be able to see a lot of difference. Uh, I think the collards have, probably have a little bit more growth. Uh, but if you, we were to send this into a lab and have them tested, uh, I think what we would see is the collards are going to have a, a higher degree of digestibility. The TDN on these is higher, the fiber is lower than what the rapeseed is. Uh, they're both, both, both going to have pretty decent protein. Collards are going to be higher. Uh, these collards are a cross between the Georgia Southern Collard and another type of brassica. And the Georgia Southern Collards are very heat tolerant. Of course, they grow them in the south. And they're very high in protein, you know, the, the slaves and the poor people in the south. Uh, there's a reason they talk about eating a lot of collard greens is because they're very high in protein for a non-legume type plant. And so for those reasons, it's one of our favorite uh, grazing brassicas planted, whether it's in the spring, the summer, or the late summer, uh, we think it's one of the best. Now the rapeseed uh, is, is no slouch, it's hanging right in there as far in terms of growth. And then we also planted some winter canola. It's Dale, this is some winter canola. I had bought, we were gonna run through an oil press and just crush the oil seed out of. And so we just threw some in the plot. And as you can see, there's very little difference between the rapeseed and the winter canola. And the reason for that is, is rapeseed, uh, or canola is a, is a type of rapeseed. So they are very, very closely related. So what are you seeing on the below ground parts there, Dale? Well, um, not a tremendous amount of difference below ground. Uh, you can zoom in on this. You can see that the, there is a bit of hybrid vigor with the collards. It's just a little bigger root system. Um, one thing I wanted to demonstrate, Keith was talking about the nutritional value. I'm going to uh, demonstrate just the difference in leaves between the rapeseed and the leaf here just look at the size of the leaves you know protein basically is about leaf to stem ratio in plants and you can see that the colors just have much bigger leaves um, another big difference as far as grazing value is the rapeseed tends to elevate its stems its growing points up above the ground the collards all these all these leaf branches are coming essentially from right here at the crown. So after a grazing pass, the collards recover so much better than what the rapeseed does. It's got a little higher grazing value because of the bigger leaves, better regrowth. And another thing we've seen, like Keith said, uh, heat tolerance. And, and it's just a little bit better. Everything rapeseed does, the collards seem to do just a little bit better. And, and the, you know, there's, you know, 70, 80 cents difference per pound between the two. But when you're only putting two or three pounds an acre on, a couple bucks an acre is not much if you can get better grazing utilization and especially better regrowth. Yeah. But if I was doing a cover crop and I wasn't grazing it, boom, this, this is, yeah. it's hard to go wrong with just uh, plain old rapeseed. Uh, it's inexpensive and it's really doing a, a good job in the soil. The other thing that was really surprising when we first started using these collards is we knew that they had the heat tolerance from the Georgia Southern Collard parent, uh, but they've got just as good a cold tolerance as this rapeseed does too. Yeah. yeah and so cool. it, it's uh, it's really, really a very versatile plant uh, and probably one of our most popular brassicas that we use.